All right, welcome to the course. Let's go ahead and get started. I just want to provide a quick overview first, though. In the next section, we'll be going over many different photographic considerations. It's a little bit longer than the other ones because we don't want to be redundant and repeat those in the later sections. So Christine does give a lot of tips in that one as we do a vintage studio look. So I have a couple different looks in that one, but we'll learn the basics of layering and masking selections and so on. Then we'll be going over to a sand dunes and smoke scene where we go over some more advanced photo merge techniques, for example, and where we'll build upon what we've already learned in the other section and adding more color and lighting and adding more considerations. The idea is that with every project, there's two projects for each section, you learn something new in Photoshop in each new project. So we're not repeating the same things over and over, you're learning something new with each project. Each section has two projects and they all have support files. So in the third section is actually at a university and that one we'll talk about composition a little bit. And then finally, in the fourth section, it was at a rundown old building, and they use sparklers, and it's a pretty cool effect for the final look. And we'll be learning how to do in color overlays and other effects like that. And then finally, the last section is a final project where you'll apply what you learned in photography and Photoshop and take photos yourself and then layer them and produce your own digital art. Let's go on to a couple quick wins, though. All right, in order to follow along in this course with the support files, you do need to download them from the additional resources in this lesson. And once you download it, say you download it to the desktop, for example, if you're on a Mac, you can just double click on it and it will extract to a folder in the same directory that we are in, for example, the desktop in this example. Or you can right click it if you're on a PC and then go to extract all and you'll just tell it where to extract to. I've just downloaded it to the desktop and so if you navigate inside there, we have a couple of folders, a few folders. So we have building sparklers, dunes and smoke, and then university, and then vintage studio. Those are the four major sections before we do the final project, which is the last section where you take photos yourself after learning more about photography. So navigate through those, and uh, these are for educational purposes only. So Christine took these photos and has provided the JPEGs and also a lot of PSD files. We need to save our work in PSD files as we work in this course because then we have all the layers and that's for your own records to have those PSD files. When you wanna upload, say for example, for the final project, when you take photos yourself, and these are two example raw files we're gonna talk about, then you can save them as JPEG or PNG, put them on a web portfolio. Those are your photos that you take though yourself uh, for the final project, so it leads up to the final project where you apply what you've learned in photography and Photoshop to create a levitation series. But these four ones you learn from the other photo shoots that Christine does. And also besides the tips that we show on the screen while she takes photos, you also follow along with the Photoshop part with me. And you'll see us work at these photo shoots and you also, uh, I'll guide you along in the Photoshop part so that you learn many different ways to layer these images and add effects like color and lighting adjustments, making them more tack sharp, adding a color overlay and so on. So once you've downloaded, it is a large file, go ahead and extract it so that you have that. Now there are a couple of handouts in here for example, some keyboard shortcuts. And so you can print this out if you want. It's just a couple keyboard shortcuts that are commonly used in Photoshop. And it's pretty handy, especially if you're new to Photoshop or you want to learn more and you don't know all the keyboard shortcuts. And there's the Mac version as well. And then also file formats. So again, we want to save it as PSD as we work on these Photoshop files so that if you go through a couple of videos and you want to pause where you're at, just save it as a PSD so we have all those uh, layers. RAW file we'll talk about later as far as taking photos in JPEG or RAW format. There's also a multi-page document here on fundamentals of camera operation. So we'll go over the exposure triangle and later in the course we're going to do some pretty quick references to specific terms so you know what we're talking about during the photo shoots, but we'll cover that more in depth later in the context of our final project. So once you have that downloaded, go ahead and open up Photoshop. And I have these two images here open. Just go to File and then Open. And we want to click and drag around these two. They're in Support Files, Building Sparklers, and Follow Along Project 1. Just want to do a quick win, just some sample techniques we're going to be learning in this course. So there are a couple ways to layer images. We could go to File, Place, and then Place one on top of the other. We could also use the rectangular marquee tool here 
and select everything, go to edit copy, and then go into the other one and go to edit paste if we wanted. Or if we have a lot of photos, as we'll see in one of our examples, we could go to file and then scripts and then load files into stack and that will stack photos as layers for us. We'll be doing that later in the course. And if our camera moved slightly in between photos, we could also go to File, Automate, Photo Merge, and that's usually for landscape photos, but it's helpful in this topic, in portrait photography, if we're trying to layer photos and the background needs to match. So we'll actually do that in one of the other tutorials as well. But for this one, we don't need to use those techniques. We can actually just click and drag uh, one off the tab there and then select the move tool. Now if you don't have these, like here's layers and here's the tools panel. Uh, if you don't have that, go to window and then make sure you have tools and also options, this option panel up here. And then also make sure you have layers checked. All right, so those are some fundamental panels to have open. So click and drag that off the tab and then we'll use this move tool it's right here. Uh, if you have a single column of tools, it might look like that. If you click that double-sided arrow, we can make it two columns. It's just personal preference. Uh, whether you want one or two columns there. So click and drag this one on top of the other one. All right, now I'm going to minimize that. And so now we have it right on top of the other. You notice those guides, it locks into place with those smart guides. If yours is not doing that, just go to view and then make sure it has snap to document bounds. Then make sure you have snap checked as well because we want it perfectly aligned there because they are both the same width and height. The photo should be taken from the same angle there without moving in between photos. So we have this one on the top. The problem is we need the other one on top, this background layer, but we can't click and drag it above the other one because it's a background layer. It's locked. So one way to unlock it is just double click on it and then click OK. All right, so now we can click and drag that in the layers panel above layer one. So now we have the model in layer zero on the top layer there. We can click the icon to toggle it and then layer one is right below. All right, so we need to do a quick selection and I'll talk about how we need to take a lot of time making selections when we do this for the final project, but we don't wanna bore you, so I'm not gonna do this really slowly. Okay, so I'm going to actually use the polygonal lasso tool. So if you click and hold onto the lasso tool here on the tools panel, go to the polygonal lasso tool and I can press control on the PC or command on the Mac and then the plus and that will zoom in a little bit. It's just a shortcut, so click and let go, click and let go. I'm going to do this pretty quickly just to show you a quick win. Uh, just need to go around this uh, stool here. All right, and we could make the edge a little bit refined. We'll be going over how to do that, but in this one I'm going to keep it pretty simple. Let's just go to select and then inverse, and that selects everything but the stool. And then right here on the bottom of the layers panel, see that gray or white rectangle with the darker circle inside it? Just press that and that masks out whatever uh, was not selected there. So now we have the effect. Problem is this edge is a little harsh. You can tell it's a little bit darker, not, not too much, but a little bit. So what we can do is with this mask here, you can press Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and click that mask and it'll show us the mask. See how it's a hard edge there? We can adjust that. So just go to the brush tool and make sure up at the top on the options panel we got hardness set to 0%. So it's a soft edge brush and we can adjust the size there as well but we can also press the left and right brackets on the keyboard. So I'm just going to paint just a little bit. Makes it a softer edge there. Just Select both of these, click the top layer there, hold shift and click the bottom layer. So now we have them both selected. And on the PC, do Control Alt E. And on the Mac, it would be Command Option E. What that does is it merges them together and then it creates a copy of that. So we still have our data, we still have our original files there. And that's best practices in Photoshop. We don't want to destructively edit, like erase. We're going to mask. We're also not going to get rid of these different layers. We're going to combine them and into a new layer up top there. And so let's go ahead and add an adjustment layer. Something we'll be going over. So bottom of the layers panel, that circle that's half filled in there, go ahead and click that. And then go to levels, which is a pretty simple one here. And these mid tones here, 
click and drag that and we can see we can brighten it up a little bit if we want something like that it's a slight adjustment and you can click the eye icon and you can see the before and after if we think that uh, maybe in the foreground let's not have that effect well it comes with the mask all adjustment layers do so let's go ahead and make sure the foreground is set to black and then we're going to paint in some black on that mask and make it a little bit larger there we go and if you're like well actually I kinda like that effect that we had so just flip them click that right there so if we click and drag with white in it will actually bring that layer back the content alright that adjustment layer so if we like that effect that's good but let's add another effect let's say we want to add a little bit of color to the smoke up here go ahead and add a new layer it's the icon right next to the trash icon just click that add new layer icon we have a transparent empty layer by default but let's add some color up here so I'm gonna use the brush tool and just select some kind of color alright just click the foreground color and you should be able to select it there and then I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller brush here and it's not gonna look right to begin with I'm just gonna click and drag up here and fill in this area something like that and then the layer blending mode it's this top option here where it says normal go ahead and bring that to color all right and then we can keep painting and the cool thing is is we can adjust after the fact what if we decide well went a little bit too far away over here or over here what we can do is add a mask and then just paint black in as the foreground color and we can mask out areas that we want to have look like the original look that we had of course we can paint white in and bring that content back in so those are a couple of quick wins a couple of previews of things we'll be doing if you need to pause the video while you're following along go ahead and do that just pause the video complete that task because a lot of these you want to take a little bit more time than we do because we don't want to bore you doing the selections in particular we're not going to spend a lot of time doing very detailed selection we'll talk about how to do that in a detailed manner and adjust it after the fact but uh, if you ever need to pause the video go ahead and do that rewind it if you need to hear a concept again or a technique and there are also video controls on the bottom of the Udemy video player where you can speed up the cadence or the tempo and you can also slow it down so different people have different preferences on how fast instructors should speak so if you prefer a slower pace of speaking go ahead and slow that down if you want a faster pace of speaking you can speed it up so those are just some tips while you're following along in this Udemy course and again as we save our progress with these support files for the course you just go to file save as and then you're going to save it as a PSD file the default Photoshop file format that will allow us to have the layers information now once you do a final project with your own photos you produce and then you layer them in the final project the last section you can save them as a JPEG you can save them as a PNG if you want and you can upload them to your portfolio with your own photos that you've layered after learning all the photography techniques from Christine and the Photoshop techniques from me so if this went a little bit quickly for you that's fine if you're kinda of confused or lost don't worry we're going to be going over these techniques in detail without it being redundant and again you can adjust the pace in the video player as well I just wanted to show a couple sample techniques we're going to be doing but we're going to be going a lot more in detail though adding some color and lighting effects layer blending modes making the photos more tack sharp and adjusting lighting and color and so on so thanks and we'll see you in the next lesson